Hello everyone. This is Mahnoor Ali and welcome to my channel Learn with Ease. In this video, we are going to learn about the lymphatic drainage of the breast. The lymphatic drainage of the breast can be read with the help of two subheadings. Them being the lymph nodes which are bean-like structures which filter the lymph whereas the other one being the lymphatics which are the vessels which carry the lymph. The lymph nodes draining the breast are the axillary lymph nodes, the inframammary or the parasternal lymph nodes, as well as some other lymph nodes like the supraclavicular lymph nodes, the deltopectoral lymph nodes, the posterior intercostal lymph nodes, as well as the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph plexus. First, coming to the axillary group of lymph nodes. As the name suggests, the axillary group of lymph nodes are situated in the axillary region. They are further divided into five groups, them being the anterior or pectoral group of axillary lymph nodes, the posterior or the subscapular group of axillary lymph nodes, the lateral or the humeral group of axillary lymph nodes, the central axillary lymph nodes, and finally the epical axillary lymph nodes. First of all, coming to the anterior or the pectoral group of axillary lymph nodes. As the name suggests, the anterior or the pectoral group of axillary lymph nodes are situated deep to the lower border of the pectoralis minor muscle, whereas the posterior or the subscapular group of axillary lymph nodes. As the name suggests, the subscapular are situated inferior to the lower border of the subscapularis muscle, whereas the lateral or the humeral group of lymph nodes are situated near the lateral wall of axilla or the humerus. Now coming to the epical group of axillary lymph nodes. The epical group of axillary lymph nodes, as the name suggests, are situated near the apex of the axilla. Then we have the central group of axillary lymph nodes, which are situated near the base of the axilla. The axilla, as we learn in the further videos, is a four-sided pyramid with an apex, a base, and four walls. The anterior wall, the posterior wall, the medial wall, and the lateral wall. You'll find the anterior group of lymph nodes near to the anterior wall, posterior group of lymph nodes near to the posterior wall, the lateral group of lymph nodes near to the lateral wall, the epical group of lymph nodes near its apex and the central group of lymph nodes near its base. Now, let us come to the inframammary or the parasternal group of lymph nodes. As the name suggests, the inframammary or the parasternal group of lymph nodes are situated inferior to the mammary region on either side of the sternum. Hence the name inframammary and parasternal. Parasternal in the sense on either side of the sternum. Now, the other lymph nodes which drain the lymph from the mammary region are the supraclavicular lymph nodes, the deltopectoral lymph nodes, the posterior intercostal lymph nodes, the subdiaphragmatic and the subperitoneal lymph plexus. The supraclavicular lymph nodes, as the name suggests, are situated above the clavicle. The deltopectoral lymph nodes, as the name suggests, are situated between the deltoid and the pectoral muscles inferior to the clavicle. The posterior intercostal group of lymph nodes are situated in the posterior region of the intercostal spaces. Whereas the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph plexus are situated, sorry, the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph plexus is a network of lymph vessels situated below the diaphragm. Now, coming to the lymphatics of the mammary gland or the breast region, these are the vessels which carry the lymph from the breast or the mammary gland. They are further divided into two groups the superficial lymphatics and the deep lymphatics. The superficial lymphatics drain the skin of breast, except the nipple and the areola. Whereas the deep lymphatics drain the parenchyma of the breast, as well as the nipple and areola. 
Deep to the areola, you have a network of lymphatic vessels known as the subareolar plexus of SAPI. An important point regarding the superficial lymphatics of the breast are, uh, is that the superficial lymphatics of one side communicate with the superficial lymphatics of the other side. Therefore, a unilateral malignancy may become bilateral. It means that a tumor which is situated on one side of the breast may reach to the other side of the breast with the help of these superficial lymphatics.